Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Hands Where I Can See Them or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Flying Bluebirds, and you can find a link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Brit. Hands Where I Can See Them Chapter 13 There Is No Us When Tally closed the door to her apartment behind her, her hands were still shaking. She felt like she was walking through some sort of fever dream, each of her movements happening on autopilot, her head dazed. She barely remembers the walk through the hallway, barely remembers walking into the living room, from where she could see someone, probably Rael, and hear her rummaging around the kitchen. Abigail and Adele were cuddled up on the couch, and Abigail only raised her head slightly to look at Tally, already half asleep. But when she spotted the completely shell-shocked expression on Tally's face, her eyes grew wide. Tally? You look like you've seen a ghost. What happened? Tally paused, opened her mouth, then closed it again, exhaled slowly, and finally managed to press out a single sentence. I think I just kissed Sarah Alder. She could hear the sound of breaking glass from the kitchen, followed by Rael shouting, What the fuck? Abigail was on her feet within seconds. She basically pushed Adil off the couch, shot him a quick apologetic smile, and then ushered him to her room. This is definitely not a conversation that you want to listen to. Her poor boyfriend was way too confused to ask any questions, and Abigail closed the door behind him so quickly that he didn't really have a chance other than to follow Abigail's orders. Then her best friend walked over to Tally. She wordlessly grabbed her wrist, dragged her to the couch, and placed her in the now empty seat next to her. Before Tally even fully understood what was happening, Riel dropped down on her other side, and the two looked at her expectantly. When Tally showed no sign of breaking the silence on her own, and was still staring into the empty space, Abigail nudged her side. Come on, Craven, give us all the juicy details. That finally seemed to pull Tally out of her paralysis, and she started to speak with a still shaky voice. Honestly, I have no idea what happened. She gestured helplessly, trying to find words. We were at Fort Salem, that bar that we believe is connected to the Camarilla case. We wanted to ask around a bit. So we went in undercover. As a couple. Abigail and Riel exchanged an amused glance. Wait a minute. Whose idea was that? Hers, I guess? I don't really know. It just somehow just happened. It was all going quite well. We just wanted to talk to some people there, get some information without scaring everyone away with our badges. There was this really weird barkeeper. He seemed somewhat mentally unstable and kept breaking into songs. Anyway, at some point, he grew suspicious because all we seemed to be doing was chatting up his customers at the bar. So Alder suggested we could dance to draw his attention away from us. Sure, I mean, what else could you possibly do? Abigail wasn't quite able to hide the irony in her voice, but Tally did not pay any attention to it. Well, we danced. But then the barkeeper started to act weird, and when we spotted him vanishing through a back door, we followed him. He walked into some sort of storage room and talked to himself. His words confused me, but that's a topic for another conversation. The important thing is that I desperately tried to understand what he was saying. I was distracted. I didn't realize he was about to leave the room before it was too late. I panicked because if he would have caught us, our cover would have been blown. I had no idea what to do, and then Alder... Then Alder reacted on instinct. She simply pushed me against the wall and... 
Fuck, she kissed me. I mean, it worked. It worked perfectly. The barkeeper barely shot us a second glance and walked right past us back into the bar. But fuck, guys. She kissed me? She kind of had to. It's not like she did it simply because she wanted to, but her lips touched my lips and somehow it was everything? The words had pretty much tumbled out of Tally's mouth, and she forced herself to take a deep breath. There was a small moment of silence, then Rael smiled widely. Okay, somebody write me a fanfiction about this right about now, she gushed. Nerd. Abigail mockingly rolled her eyes at her, then focused her attention back on Tally. So what happened next? Tally huffed at this, the frustration clearly audible in her voice. Well, turns out that the sound of Detective Batan's voice in your earpiece is not exactly a turn-on. Truth be told, that wasn't all that had happened, but definitely all she would share for now. Oh, fuck. You two were loud enough that she heard what was going on? Tally Craven, I have never been prouder. Tally grabbed one of the pillows and buried her head inside it. Abigail, stop it. It didn't mean anything. It was just the easiest way out of it. But yes, Batan will probably use this against me for the rest of my career, and I will definitely end up murdering her at some point. Poor Alder. That must have been such a huge sacrifice from her side. Riel's voice was dripping with sarcasm. Abigail and Riel were not convinced at all that the kiss had been meaningless. Telly did her best to contradict them, but deep down couldn't help but wonder if maybe, just maybe, this kiss hadn't only happened out of convenience. In fact, Alder's behavior had definitely shown her just how much the woman had enjoyed kissing her. She just wasn't ready to say this out loud. For now, Tally insisted that it had only been a meaningless kiss, one that Tally very much enjoyed, but now needs to get over with, on her own. So she excused herself to bed after a couple of minutes, and her two best friends knew better than to stop her. But of course, sleep didn't come easily. As soon as Tally closed her eyes, images from the evening started to flood her brain. She tossed and turned around for a while, but soon realized that the more she tried to ban the memories out of her brain, the harder they came back to haunt her. So, she finally gave in. She groaned in frustration and allowed her mind to drift back to that dark hallway in Fort Salem. She felt Alder's lips on hers before she fully understood what was happening, and when her brain finally caught up, her body was already reacting to it. The kiss was tentatively at first, barely more than a soft brush against her lips, almost as if Alder wanted to give Tally a way out. But at that moment, a way out was the last thing on Tally's mind. Instead, she felt herself deepening the kiss, and placed her hand on Alder's hips, pulling her even closer, drawing a surprised gasp from Alder. Out of the corner of her eyes, Tally barely registered hers walking past him, stopping for the briefest of seconds, but then apparently not in a mood to interrupt them and deal with two frustrated customers, continued to walk back to the bar. As soon as he had closed the door behind them, Alder broke the kiss and leaned back slightly. Tally felt a wave of disappointment wash over her, but she knew she had absolutely no right to feel that way. The kiss had been a distraction, a way for them to keep their cover intact, nothing more. Still, she couldn't bring herself to loosen her grasp around Alder's body, and the other woman was still using her full body weight to press her against the wall. For a moment, they just stared at each other, faces only inches apart, breathing heavily. Telly mustered Alder intensely and noticed how dark her eyes had turned, filled with nothing but want and desire. Then her own eyes dropped down to her still slightly parted lips, and she stopped thinking completely. She didn't even know who made the first move. But suddenly Alder's lips were back on her own, drawing a throaty moan from her when she felt her gently biting her lower lip. Alder licked over her bruised lip apologetically, then moved her head slightly and pressed tiny kisses along Tally's jawline, up to her ear. Do you have any idea, she whispered, voice slightly rough, what this dance has done to me? Each of her words seemed to send a new wave of pleasure through Tally's body, and she groaned in response. You're not the only one. Suddenly feeling very bold, Tally let her hands wander further down Alder's back and placed them on her ass. She squeezed it tightly, and the approving hum that Alder released might have just been the hottest thing she's ever heard in her life. Oh, Craven, all the things I could do to you right now. What is stopping you? Well, that would be me. The voice of Detective Batan was ringing through the earpiece, effectively making the two jump apart. Telly forced herself to stop right there, 
to simply ignore the awkward silence that had followed afterward, to not think about their tense walk of shame out of the bar and into the car where Detective Patan had already been waiting, a wide grin on her face, to just pretend that embarrassing car ride home had never happened. Instead, she focused on the sensation she had felt when Alder had pressed her body against her own, the way her breathing had quickened, the sound of her moans. Tally barely registered how her hands started to wander under her covers, into her pants, and right below the waistband of her panties. She was not surprised by the pool of wetness that awaited her, and when she let her fingers glide through her slick folds and began to draw small circles around her clit, she imagined that she was still trapped against a wall in the hallway. She thought about Alder, how she would smirk at her seductively, how she would drop down on her knees right there and then and pull down Tally's pants, how she would place teasing kisses down her stomach, how Tally would bury her hands in her hair while Alder would finally use her tongue, would lick her where she needed it most, in a way that was making it hard for Tally to stand. When she came, only minutes later, it was with Alder's name on her lips. The next morning was another one Tally dreaded going to work. This time because she'd absolutely no idea how to face Alder after what happened between them the previous evening. No matter how hard she was trying to deny it, this kiss, these kisses, had not only happened because of their undercover investigation. They had meant something, at least to her, but very likely also to Alder. And somehow this was making everything so much harder. When she had finally managed to drag herself out of bed and was stepping into the bullpen, she was pretty close to a nervous breakdown. Her heart was beating heavily in her chest and her hands were shaking when she stepped out of the elevator. However, it turned out that there was no need for her to freak out because, for the first time since Deli started working at Boston PD, Detective Sarah Alder was not already sitting behind her desk. Instead, Detective Batan was waiting for her, arms crossed in front of her body, a knowing smirk plastered over her face. Well, that was definitely no improvement. Detective Craven, she grinned. Now, you look incredibly well-rested. Rough night? Telly let out an annoyed huff. As you know, I came home rather late, and I didn't sleep really well. Lots of things on my mind. On your mind or in your bed? Didn't know you have trouble hearing. This earned her an amused chuckle from Batan, which Tally decided not to comment any further on. Instead, she turned her head and scanned the room quickly. She was confused that she still couldn't spot Alder anywhere. Where's Alder? No idea, Detective Batan shrugged. Then raised her eyebrows and lowered her voice slightly. I actually thought you two would come together, pun intended. We didn't, no pun intended, and you really need to keep your nose out of other people's business. Tally didn't mean for her words to come out that harsh, but the lack of sleep and the amount of stress she had put herself through before her day had even really begun was getting to her. She could feel a headache building up, and had absolutely no patience left for Batan's mockery. She had been incredibly grateful that the other detective had held herself back last night, which might have been because Alder had shot her a warning glance as soon as they had been back in the car, which had made it more than clear that Batan would be walking home as soon as she only dared to open her mouth. Batan's silence was definitely something that Tally could get used to, but she didn't seem to do her that favor again. Oh, someone is in deep. She got you good, huh, Red? Tally was about to shoot something back, but then Captain Bellwetter walked into the room, ready for the morning briefing. Saved by the Bellwetter. Detective Batan muttered. Then she joined the captain at the front of the room. Captain Bellwetter greeted everyone and informed the detectives about the last developments in the different cases. Tally did her best to focus, but the fact that Alder still wasn't here was distracting her and left her with an uneasy feeling in her stomach. Where was her partner? Was she all right? Meanwhile, Captain Bellwetter was blissfully unaware of the chaos in Tally's head and asked Detective Batan to give a brief overview of their spontaneous undercover investigation last night. Fortunately, Telly snapped out of her thoughts, right when she felt Batan's eyes on her, and the older woman started to speak. To be fair, I've spent most of the time coordinating everything from the car. The true action happened inside the bar. I'd say we've definitely made some progress, and there have been some interesting developments. But for some of us, the evening had also been a bit frustrating. She actually had the audacity to look directly at Tally and send a suggestive wink her way. Tally could hear Abigail snort behind her and sunk a little deeper into her chair. She grabbed them to the edge of her desk, hoping that nobody would bother to put too much thought into Batan's words, 
To her relief, she seemed to notice her discomfort, and Batan continued. I'd usually ask Detective Alder to give you a more detailed overview, but since she had decided not to grace us with her presence just yet, Detective Craven, would you give us the honor of telling us what exactly happened inside the bar? And don't be shy with the details. Oh, goddess. Tally wanted to strangle her. The idea of removing someone's vocal cords suddenly didn't sound all that appalling to her anymore. Would that kill her? It would probably kill her. So maybe she could just damage them irreparably and leave the rest of her intact? Surely, everybody who knew Detective Batan would understand. Tally put on her brightest fake smile and replied with a slightly too cheerful voice. My pleasure. We wouldn't want anybody to get all bitter because they were missing out on all the fun. Tally smirked when Batan's only reply was a dramatic eye roll. Then she swiftly got up and walked to the front. She gave a short overview of their evening and purposefully avoided anything that happened between her and Alder that wasn't directly related to the case. Instead, she focused mainly on the rather sparse information they had managed to collect about Fort Salem. She briefly mentioned the creepy barkeeper, as well as his mysterious sister, then proceeded to describe the overhearing rambling of Hurst and his mention of the Camarilla killer. Just when she had sat back down and Captain Bellwater had taken over once more, assigning everyone their task for the day, Tally could hear the doors of the elevator opening behind her, and when she turned around, she was flooded with relief when Sarah Alder stepped out of it. Sorry, I am late. It followed a moment of stunned silence, while Alder walked to her usual spot next to Tally without ever so much as turning her head. Nobody, not even Captain Bellwetter, dared to comment on her tardiness. Still everyone stared. In all her time at the department, there had been not a single day on which Sarah Alder had been laid, and apparently nobody had the slightest idea what to make out of it. Once Alder had settled down, the captain cleared her throat and simply proceeded with her briefing. Tally, however, couldn't tear her eyes away from her partner. For most people, Alder would look just as collected as any other day. But Tally wasn't most people. Despite Alder's effort to cover up the dark circles under her eyes, she looked tired, like she hadn't slept at all last night. Her whole body seemed tense, her expression stern, lips pressed together to a firm line. But what was the worst of it? that she did not even acknowledge Tally's presence. No smile, no good morning, nothing. Instead, she kept staring to the front of the room, her jaw clenched. It was clear that something was up, that something was bothering her. And Tally was almost certain that she was that something. Throughout the day, her suspicions were only further confirmed. They spent their time digging deeper into the history of Fort Salem, and this time focused on the barkeeper, Alban Hurst, and his mysterious sister, Kara Brand. The most suspicious thing about them, however, was the fact that nothing about them seemed to be anything but completely ordinary. They had no criminal record, no history with the police, or any sort of crime, not even a parking ticket. That made it even harder to gather some actual useful information, and especially Kara kept herself so sparse that she almost seemed like a ghost. There were no photos of her online, no social media accounts, nothing. Alder was even more snappy than usual the whole time. She didn't speak much, and when she did, then it was mostly barked assignments or monosyllabic responses. Even Detective Batan seemed to sense that something was up and kept her teasing at bay, at least when Alder was around. As soon as she was alone with Tally, she was still giving her hell. Alder, on the other hand, tried to avoid being alone with Tally at all costs. In fact, she avoided any sort of interaction with her, and when there actually was no other way than to talk to her, her eyes were everywhere else in the room, but not on Tally. Tally had expected things between them to be awkward, but this sort of behavior was driving her crazy. She knew she needed to stay professional. They were at work, after all. Still, Alder's disinterest was affecting her more than she cared to admit. It frustrated her to no end, and her mood dropped further with every passing minute. At some point in the late afternoon, Detective Batan headed out to follow a lead on another case, and Tally used her absence as an excuse to hide in the attic. She just needed to get away from people for a while, especially from Alder. For the first time, she felt like she just couldn't get any work done when her partner was around. So she grabbed a couple of files and her laptop, and hid away upstairs for the rest of the shift. To her relief, the change of scenery and the lack of grumpy Alders actually did wonders to her productivity, and soon she was completely lost in her work. She wasn't sure just how long she was sitting on the old couch reading through files and online entries and taking notes, but when she looked up again, 
She was surprised to see that it had already gotten dark outside. She let out a loud sigh, shifted slightly on the couch, and was about to grab another fowl when the door to the attic opened, and Alder stepped inside. Telly watched her eyes widen in surprise. It was obvious that she had not expected to find her here, especially not this late. She straightened herself, and her upper body turned back towards the door, almost as if she would simply leave again, without any word of explanation. That was when Tally finally had enough. Wait. She watched Alder's shoulder drop, and for a split second thought she would just pretend she hadn't hurt her and walk out of the room anyway. But then Alder turned around, and for the first time today, actually looked at her, eyes tired and full of uncertainty. Tally wanted to be angry. She really did. She wanted to yell at Alder, scream at her to get a grip, and stop acting like a child around her. But the way she stood there, looking like a picture of misery, made her stomach clench and her voice softened. Is... is everything all right between us? Of course, Craven. Why wouldn't it be? Alder immediately drew her eyes away from Tally and stared down. She sounded exhausted. You tell me. First, you arrive here way too late. You are never late. Then your mood is worse than Abigail's when she's on her period, which I did not think was possible until today. You don't talk to me. You can't stand to be in the same room with me. Hell, you can't even look at me right now. Tally got up from the couch and slowly walked towards Alder. Her voice had gotten louder and louder with each sentence, and her partner actually flinched at her words. Tally exhaled loudly, reminding herself that she only wanted answers and not to make Alder feel even worse. Alder, I'm not stupid. I know what this is about, but don't you think you owe me at least an explanation? Alder walked through the room in an attempt to get some distance between her and Tally again. She stopped right in front of the wooden desk, then turned around again. Look, she let out a tired sigh. I'm sorry if I overstepped. I really shouldn't have kissed you, especially not without asking permission first. I mean, I was there when the incident with Buttonwood happened. I really should have known better, yet here I am acting exactly like him. Tally frowned in confusion. That were definitely not the words she had expected to come out of Alder's mouth. What? You don't have to apologize. The situation was nothing like Buttonwood's harassment. You are nothing like him. You didn't force me to do anything. I could have pushed you away at any time. But you didn't, Alder stated plainly. No, I didn't, Tally replied, her voice dropping slightly. Then she stayed silent for a moment. Their eyes met, and Tally could see Alder's pupils widen slightly when the full intent of Tally's reply hit her. She felt the air between them changing, away from the uncomfortable, stiff tension, back to their usual relaxed, yet strangely heated banter, so she decided to push her luck, and slowly step closer to Alder. In fact, pushing you away was the least of my concerns. She smiled softly. It was a good kiss. It was work. Ha, huh. there it was again. Alder's usual defense mechanism to avoid showing any sort of human emotion. This time, however, Telly had enough and wasn't taking any of it. Instead, she raised her eyebrows in disbelief, then took another step forward, which caused Alder to back down slightly. Her back was now pressed against the table. Her hands were gripping its top. Is that really all it was? Telly leaned forward so that her face was now only inches away from Alder's. Craven? Alder growled warningly. Their noses were bumping against each other, and Tally could feel Alder's breath ghosting over her lips. So you're telling me that if I lean forward now, just a little bit more, and kiss you, you would feel absolutely nothing? Tally's voice was barely more than a rough whisper, and she could feel Alder's breath hitch at her words. You're telling me that it wouldn't do anything to you? You're telling me that nothing in you is aching for me to kiss you? To touch you? That you are not currently thinking about me running my hands over your body slowly? Alder nodded weakly, but couldn't stop her eyes from dropping down to Tally's lips. Tally let out a dry chuckle. That was exactly the kind of reaction she had been hoping for. I am going to kiss you now, detective. But she didn't move. It was undeniable that this was something Alder wanted. Still, she needed to hear it. Needed Alder to hear it. After another moment of silence, Alder gave in. Her breathless voice resonated through the room. Okay. 
and Tally closed the remaining distance between them. Just when her upper lip was gently grazing against Alder's, and the older woman let out a delicious whimper at the contact that Tally felt right between her legs, the shrill sound of Tally's cell phone made them jump apart again. Tally groaned loudly when she spotted Detective Batan's name on the display. A fucking course. Yes, she almost barked into the phone. Is she with you? Batan's voice sounded serious and slightly strained. Tilly had never heard her like that before, but her mind was still too clouded to immediately process her words. What? Sarah, she's not picking up. Is she with you? Tilly blinked, and an uneasy feeling overcame her. Yes, where you were. She hesitated and bit her lip. When her eyes landed on Alder, who was still leaning against that desk, lips parted, and a light blush on her cheeks. Working. Craven, right now, I really couldn't care less about what you two were doing. And that was when Tally realized that something must have gone terribly wrong. What happened? Alder lifted her head, at the sudden change of Tally's tone, and raised her eyebrows in question. But Tally simply lifted up her hand and motioned her to wait. I need you two to come to the address I just texted you immediately. We have another victim. Patan's voice dropped slightly, and Tally could hear something else in it that she hasn't heard before. She sounded... scared. Brace yourselves, it's... Just come quickly. Tally and Alder drove to the address the Detective Patan had sent in record speed and without speaking a single word. Whatever had just happened, or rather almost happened, in the attic simply did not seem to matter anymore, and the atmosphere between them had shifted back to tense and awkward. As soon as Tally had quickly summarized what the call was about. She couldn't help but feel a sharp pain in her chest when she had watched the expression on Alder's face shift. The warmth in her eyes, the vulnerability, the want. It had all vanished, and within seconds had been replaced by a stone-cold facade that made it impossible to get behind and see what Alder was truly feeling. Still, Tally had noticed a slight tremor in her hands. When they had climbed into the car, had seen how her knuckles had turned white because she was gripping the steering wheel so hard. She had wanted to reach out, but had known that every touch of her, every word of comfort, would have only resulted in Alder pulling away from her even further. When they made it to the crime scene, Detective Patan was already waiting for them. It looked like Tally had indeed not imagined the slight sound of panic in her voice earlier on the phone. Just like Alder, she tried to hide it. But Tally could see, in the way that she was holding herself, how utterly shocked the other detective was, and it did absolutely nothing to ease Tally's own discomfort. Patan only greeted them with a curt nod, then wordlessly gestured them to follow her. They walked in the direction of an old shed that was surrounded by ruins of a former factory building. Even from the distance, Tally could see the stake that had been built directly in front of the shed, and even though it was no longer burning, the smell of fire, of burned flesh and death, was still lingering in the air and made it hard for her to breathe. They walked closer, and soon Tally could spot the lifeless body that had already been untied and had been placed on the body bag right next to the stake. Tally froze. Her whole body went cold and her mouth opened in shock. This victim had apparently been found way sooner than the others. Her body was not burned badly. The first thing Tally saw were short black curls. Then a round face. Pale lips that would never smile at her again. Dark brown eyes that had been sparkling with energy and joy not even a day ago and were now lifelessly staring up into the night sky. Libba. This was Libba. A strangled sob escaped Tally's throat. She closed her eyes and the world started to spin around her. She couldn't hear anything anymore and felt her knees getting weak. Suddenly, two strong hands grabbed her arms, steadying her, giving her something to lean on. Then a surprisingly soft voice spoke to her quietly. Deep breaths read, in and out. You got this. Tally did as she was told but it still took her several minutes until she managed to open her eyes again. She was surprised to see that it was in fact Detective Patan who was standing next to her and was now drawing small, comforting circles along her upper arms. How? Tally managed to press out. Then she realized that Alda was no longer standing next to her, and she turned her head in a panic. Where is... Shh. Patan gently put her hands on Tally's face and forced her to look at it. Focus on me, okay? Alda's all right. She just needs a moment and I need you to give it to her. Can you do that? Tally nodded, then proceeded to focus on managing her own panic. She inhaled, then exhaled. 
slowly, steadily, and with each breath, the world around her became a bit sharper again. I... Thank you, she whispered quietly. Detective Patan gave her shoulder one last encouraging squeeze. Then she stepped away to give Tally some more space. Tally's gaze dropped and spotted a small piece of paper that Batan was holding in her hand. What's that? The reason why Sarah left. Because it wouldn't be fair to hide it from you. But because I think you can handle it. But it's going to be a lot, so I want you to take a moment and tell me if you're ready for this. Tally didn't need a moment. She had to see what had freaked Alder out so much. So she almost immediately replied. I can do this. Detective Batan sighed, then stretched out her arm and handed a piece of paper to Tally. She opened it, lowered her gaze, and felt her heart drop with every word she read. Considered as a personal favor. You're welcome, Sarah. Tally looked back up again. Where did she go? Craven, you really shouldn't. I asked where did she go, Batan? Detective Batan silently nodded in the direction of the shed, and Tally practically ran around the building and only slowed down when she spotted Alder. Her partner was absently staring in the distance and was startled when Tally walked closer. It's just me, Tally tried to reassure her. Except that Alder was looking anything but reassured. Her eyes were wide open, her face as white as chalk. Tally reached out and placed one of her hands on Alder's arm, but she immediately stepped back and pulled her arm away. Hey, this is not your fault, okay? You didn't do anything wrong. Alder shook her head and lowered her gaze. I did. I did everything wrong. Her voice was shaking and got quieter with each word. I should have known better. I let my feelings gain the upper hand. I, I gave in. I was weak. You were human, and so was I. Remember that we are in this together. And whatever this thing between us is, it's anything but weakness. Alder seemed to consider Tally's words for a moment. But when she finally lifted her head to look at her, her blue eyes had turned cold and emotionless, and Tally could feel her heart drop. Let me make one thing crystal clear, Craven. Her sharp voice cut through the night. There is no us, and there never will be. Then she turned around and walked away, leaving Tally behind. She didn't turn around again, and Tally could feel tears starting to dwell in her eyes, as all her words replayed over and over in her head. There is no us, and there never will be. There is no us, and there never will be. She knew that Alder was upset, but the harsh tone of her voice, the coldness, and the irrelevance behind her words were hitting Tally hard. She needed to be strong. Stronger than the pain that was currently frilling through her veins, taking control of her whole body. She forced herself to take a deep breath, forced herself to direct all of the hurt, all of the rage and anger she was feeling towards the person who was responsible for all of this. The only way to make this end was to catch the Camarilla killer. So that's what she would focus all her energy on. That's what she would do. She recalled everything that had happened since the serial killer came back. The death of Tanya Flynn, the message to Alder, their investigation in Fort Salem, Libba, her death, another message. It was so different from his earlier approach. It was personal. Every one of his moves, chosen to get to Alder. He was specifically targeting her. He needed to see her getting hurt. That was when it hit Tally. What if he actually needed to see her? Needed to see her struggling? To dwell on the pain he was causing her? What if the Camarilla killer was here? She looked around and let her gaze wander over the abandoned building in front of her. Then she spotted a large broken window, from which one could perfectly overlook the whole scenery. And when she thought she was seeing something move behind it, she reacted without thinking. She reached the building quickly, but immediately regretted not bringing her flashlight when she stepped inside. Most of the walls were still intact, and there were barely any windows, so it was incredibly hard to see anything. Still, Tally moved carefully, trying to make as little noise as possible. She tried her best to ignore the uneasy feeling inside of her and pushed herself deeper into the building. The thick walls muted every sound from outside, and the only thing Tally heard was her own rapid breathing. She climbed up some stairs and soon found the room belonging to the window she had spotted from outside. It was completely empty. Tally stepped inside and looked around. Her eyes fell on the floor in front of the window, which was illuminated by the dim moonlight, and paused. 
Adrenaline shot through her body when she noticed that the thick layer of dust was smudged. She could actually make out footsteps. Somebody had definitely been standing there, not that long ago, and maybe that someone had actually left behind more traces than just their shoe profile. She was about to walk back downstairs and tell the others about her discovery, but just at that moment a loud crash sounded behind her, and suddenly someone was moving towards her. She spun around, unable to see much in the dark, and before she could process what was happening, something heavy hit her on the forehead. A sharp pain went through her body, and then everything went dark. Please find a fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.